You guys are so lucky. Hi, I'm Maria from the Strong Body, Strong Soul Show. But you are about to hear from Pedro at My Stuttering Life. I can't wait to hear what he's talking about right now. What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry, but through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 55, and my special guest is Jason Nunez. Mr. Nunez is 39 years old, Catholic, husband, and father of two. He was born and raised in El Paso, Texas, and now lives in San Antonio, Texas. Jason and his family are active parishioners at the Church of the Holy Spirit. He has stuttered for as long as he can remember. He went through speech therapy all through his elementary school years and was discharged from therapy after his seventh grade year. His journey through his stuttering life has taught him many things, most of all, determination and patience. He is the creator and host of the John 330 podcast. I am honored to have him as a guest with me on the My Stuttering Life podcast. Welcome, Jason Nunez. Hello, Pedro. How are you? I am doing awesome, sir. I want to thank you for hopping on this this podcast, and we are going to have a great time. We certainly are. I've been looking forward to it. All right, sir. Cool. Now, we have a lot of topics to cover, so let's get started. All right. So, do you remember when you first began to stutter? Um, Yeah, I've I've actually been stuttering as far back as I can remember. I've always remembered having some type of a problem with fluency. When I was a lot younger, it was a lot more severe uh, than what it is now. But uh, definitely nowadays, it is still kind of rear its ugly head up every now and then, especially in the most inconvenience of circumstances. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) Believe me, I do know, Mr. Nunez. (laughs) (laughs) Now, does it run in your family? Are there any other people who stutter in your family? You know what? That's kind of the interesting kind of point is it, it does not run in my family. I, from what I know, there's no one else in my immediate or my extended family that has really had any serious type of issues with fluency to the point to where they require speech therapy or some kind of assistance from someone who's had training. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's and really, so it's been you new. are the only one. Yeah. See, m- my mom st- st- stuttered growing up and d- during her, um, I believe, her teenage years she just told herself that she was done i mean Mm. she (laughs) she put her foot down (laughs) and said that's it i am done no more stuttering and and she stopped i mean the power of women i don't know but i mean when she put her foot down and said that's it I was like, wow. I mean, that is, I mean, we all have our, you know, our own different journeys with our stutter. And I've been stuttering for 43 years now. And so, you know, I guess I'm still waiting for that day. But you know what? It's it, it's all good. It's all good. I agree. I agree. From from what I know, and I, I obviously don't, I don't know the root cause of my stutter. Um, when I was younger, a lot of my stutter it started with like a, a vocal block in my voice box and in my throat to where I couldn't even get the words out. Like it's like the air stopped at my throat and I could not exhale to speak. Uh, it was it was a lot of like I was stuck. And from from what my my parents and my family have told me is that when I was when I was because I'm from in my immediate family, I'm the youngest. I'm I'm the baby, right? So I have two I have two older brothers and an older sister. And so I was the baby in the household. And from what I've been told, is that when he, from when I was really, really young, my siblings would tickle my feet, and, and they would do that a lot. And there's a belief that that's what caused my 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 fluency being how it is. But um, I, I don't really know. You know, I, I don't put a lot of weight on that. Um, and I don't spend a lot of time on trying to wonder why or why is this happening to me and no one else in my family 
does this mean I'm adapted or you know whatever the case is, you know, because your mind can wander, right? And I just know that it's a part of me and it helps make up Jason overall. <laughs> See, mine, you know, was um, caused by um, a a dog attack when I was yes. five years old. And yes, I've, I've heard your past episodes. So you I, know, I've, when I when I heard that, I was like, wow. It's a, a traumatic yeah, experience. Yeah, it was pretty rough because I mean that was a big white German shepherd, and here here I am, a tiny five year old, and yeah, I mean that was. And people ask me, do I have a, f- a fear of dogs? I said, no, I love dogs. I mm-hmm. love German shepherd dogs. I love all dogs. I I have a dog. Granted, she's a terrier chihuahua mix and she weighs like five pounds, but I st- still love dogs. You know, I don't have a fear of dogs. That just happened to me when I was younger. And that was the cause of my stutter. And so I I have these talks with my mom that had I not had that dog attack, would I still have a stutter down the road because oh, of nice. genetics I mean, I just don't know. But I will tell you that my parents are from South Texas, you know, the Rio Grande. And so I actually have heard that if you tickle, tickle, tickle when they're young, that, you know, it might happen that they might have a stutter. So I have heard that myth that whatever it's called, but when you were telling me that, you know, all these memories popped into my head when um, I would go to my cousin's house and they would talk about that. And so that is just very interesting. Interesting indeed. That's Honestly, I've never heard that aside from my family where they're like, well, maybe that's why. So that's that's interesting that that's, you know, something in even other parts of Texas as well. So interesting. Now, you've had speech therapy in the um, intro. You talk about going through speech therapy from elementary school through junior high. Did you find it helpful? I most certainly did. And I actually credit um, the fluency that I do have due to the speech therapy that I did receive. And I just like, you know, mentioned in in the, in the, in the intro there, and you see that just that small repetitiveness right now, that's an example of what my, of what my struggle in my stuttering life is right now, that turning that corner to continue a phrase that's kind of where my stuttering has kind of morphed and evolved into. I could begin to feel the breath in my in my throat to tense up. And I use that repeating the same word I just said as a technique and as a way for me to get past that feeling I'm going to block. And it may take me two or three times to repeat the same word. And I've, I've almost gotten it down to where it sounds natural. But if you hear that back and you hear that, you can hear the struggle. And I, I certainly feel it. But um, that's kind of the example of now what I, of what, what I feel is my continuation of stuttering, that feeling of blockage. And I use that repeating work to kind of get past that. But uh, to back to your question, yes, fluency and speech therapy helped me a tremendous deal. Just in the breathing exercises and in the techniques and the just for me, especially when I get excited, I tend to just blow through a sentence and if someone is dictating what I'm saying, there is no punctuation. <laughs> there's no commas. There's no periods. There's no nothing. It's just one extremely long run on sentence. You know what I mean? And I have that, been that's, there. <laughs> <laughs> that's certainly another part of my struggle with my fluency. But I just, I've lear- learned and I still continue to try to be intentional and mindful of, okay, just calm down. You know, you, you're going to get it out. You might as well get it out right the first time. That way you're not repeating yourself. And in, in a way, it's going to help shape shape how I approach a lot of things in life because I'm a very passive person. And I think just that approach of just calming down has kind of kind of um, carried on into other aspects of my life to where, okay, let's just calm down here. You know, let's uh, take this easy and just go through it at a nice pace. That way we're not having to do this again or have to repeat ourselves. Um, speech therapy was fun. Uh, it was honestly a time that I really enjoyed so much so that uh, the, the school district that I attended growing up when I was in speech therapy in the summer, they actually had what's called a fluency camp. So every two weeks in the summer, they gathered all the children in, in elementary school that were going to speech therapy during the, during the school year. And for two weeks out of the summer, 
they would we would all meet at one school and they would break us up by grade. And it's like we had like a full day of fun and speech therapy. And we were with other kids who had the same struggles as us. So it's good for me to know that I'm not the only weirdo walking around like this. You know what I mean? So it's it's other it's other people that have the same struggle that I do. And you know, like, oh, you know, how do you you know what do you do and what works for you? And as you get older, you you, you begin to think about those kind of questions to ask those people. And it's it was really beneficial for me. I uh, the one thing I know I, I never did, and I I wish I could I could have, but was to thank my speech therapist. I had the same speech therapist all through elementary, up through middle school, the seventh grade when I was discharged from speech therapy. Um, Marsha Clark, she really uh, impacted my life in my formative years with my fluency. And um, I, you know, being a teenager, you're like, okay, I'm done. Okay. You know, you're not, you don't think of how much help you were given until you're older and you, and you, and you uh, reflect on it. So for me, you know, I definitely would like to take time to at least say her name and thank her as well for, for what she's done for my life. Wow. That is awesome. When you were talking about the you know techniques that that you were using Mm -hmm. um having had 20 years of speech therapy um i picked up on what you were doing i said oh my gosh (laughs) i learned that (laughs) back in the day i said that is so cool (laughs) yes and it's it's kind of interesting because you know i honestly i don't remember being taught that technique i just know that it works for me so i must have been taught it you know what i mean I must have yes. been taught at some point in my speech therapy that when you're feeling this, do this. So for me, it's now it's almost like a muscle memory thing. It's almost like a reflex. Very interesting. Right. How cool. Well, let's give her a a global thank you. Yes, indeed. Marsha Clark, thank you for helping Jason Nunez. You are <laughs> yeah, hashtag awesome. She is. And let me get that right. Marsha Clark was a defense attorney in the OJ case. I said the name wrong. Her, oh. name is, her name is Marsha Allen. <laughs> I don't know why Marsha Clark came up, okay. but just to make sure I get it right. It's an important moment. So, yeah. Correction. Marsha Allen. Yes. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was, um, oh my gosh, M- Mrs. Woolsey. And that was in 1976, I believe. Mm. Yeah. I'm a lot older than you are, Jason. <laughs> just FYI. Yeah, FYI. <laughs> Yes, when I went to school, we had horses and wagons. So yeah, there you go. There you, go. you still had to clap the erasers up after class, so that way they could be used for the next day. That kind of stuff. You know, we did that. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so how was high school with 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 having a stutter? Because during your 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 high school years, you know, you are going through puberty and your hormones and then, you know, and everything else is happening. And then you have a, st- a, st- a stutter on top of that. Right. And so how did you do in, in high school as, as a stutterer? Well, I would like, looking back on it now, I would like to think that I did fairly well in high school as a stutterer. By the time I got to high school, a lot of uh, my friends and especially the people in my grades, they were all aware because I went, I was excused from class uh, for speech therapy all through elementary into seventh grade. So whoever had me for a class knew that I had to leave at some point several times a week. And so naturally they're curious. They ask me where I go. So I tell them. So there's what, what I did a lot. And, you know, I'm going to date myself now is when the teasing first began was when I was in elementary and it was in the eighties. So uh, at that time, Max Hedrum was a figure in pop culture. And for those who don't know who Max Hedrum is, he's, he was like a 3D fictation, a fictus character who was almost, he was made on a computer and he would glitch. And when he would talk, he would repeat himself, almost like as if he stuttered. And so when people would ask me why I talk like that, I would tell them I really like Max Hedrum. And so that, that was my way to kind of not let it affect me, is I kind of said, hey, I'm a big fan of this guy. And kids not really knowing more than that would go, okay, and they would just kind of leave it alone. Uh, once I got to high school, um, my friends, other students, you know, they were aware that I studied. By that time, I was no longer in speech therapy. But um, my fluency at that point had kind of gotten to a point to where I could carry a conversation. And what would really rear its ugly head out was either that repeating 
or if I was excited, I would just blow through a sentence. And I'm assuming they would just chalk it up to I was excited. So they would say, what did you say? Um, every now and now, every now and then it would get awkward and they'd say, did you say this? I'd say, no, I said that. Oh, I could have sworn you said this. So every now and then there was some kind of an awkward moment. But um, thankfully, I, I think I'm just fortunate and blessed that I really was not teased too bad about my stuttering, uh, which uh, I'm extremely thankful for. I, I can't imagine that now, especially in the age of social media. And, um, you know, there, there, there's a lot that can be broadcast about you if you're not aware about it, you know. So um, I'm kind of thankful that I was raised in the age that I was. Well, wow, you had Max Headroom. I had Porky Pig. There you go. <laughs> yep, yep. When I was in school at that time, and yeah, they, yeah, Porky Pig, um, yeah, that's what they would call me in high school. And um, like you, they would bu buzz me over the intercom, you know, when I was in elementary school. And to have them call your name in the middle of class and then you have to gather all your things and mm -hmm. they're all watching you they're all all eyes are on you and then you get everything and then you walk out and i know they were talking about me i know it but <laughs> i mean that's what they did back in the day you know they would just call you call you out you know and 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 in growing up i'm all through grade school i mean kids were mean i mean kids were just out and out mean and so the bullying and the mocking and the teasing all started in uh in grade school and it and it worked its way up to junior high and then in high school in high school there there was a group of people that welcomed me in and that was the drama club the drama mm. club you know they they welcomed me in with open arms and said, we don't care if you stutter, you come hang out with us. And let me tell you, I mean, these people were amazing. They were supportive. And when other people had told me that I could not be in a play, my drama buddy said, no, you can do it. You can do it. And here is your first play, The Wizard of Oz. And so, you know, I was the lion. And so, you know, they they handed me the script. I learned all my lines and come opening night when I hopped on 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 stage, I read all my lines and pe and I could see people who knew me in the audience with their mouths open. Mm -hmm. Like, how can he do that? He stutters. Yep. But here's here's what I told everybody. When I was on stage, I wasn't Pedro. I was the lion. And the lion did not stutter. And therefore, I did not stutter. And they were just scratching their heads. And they were just completely perplexed. And they had no clue as to how I was able to do it. But let me tell you, I had the best time on stage. It is, I mean, it was just awesome. And the, you know, and... And we went to weekend speech tournaments. I came home with ribbons. I came home with trophies. We did a one act play that went to state. And so, I mean, it, it was just awesome. I mean, you know, and when everyone was telling me that I could not do something, well, guess what? I am going to prove you wrong. And so I had to thank the drama club at my old high school. Tolosa Midway, Rand Morgan High School, Go Warriors. I'm telling you, they were just awesome. So, yeah. High school days, high school days. I wasn't as brave as you in high school. I, I, decided, to, I decided to join the orchestra. So I did my, I did my, um, my arms and my fingers do the, do the performing, if you will, as, as a part of the orchestra. So How cool. Yeah. What was your um, instrument? Oh, I played the violin. I played the violin oh. for about seven years, from sixth grade all the way through high school. So that is awesome. So, do you have any advice for parents and teachers with regards to, you know, children who stutter? Yes, for anyone who's listening who happens to be a teacher, or even if you have a son or daughter, or even even if it's a niece or nephew who happens to stutter or has some kind of a fluency issue. Um, and this is probably something that's been said in the past, in your past episodes, but have patience with that person. 
know that that when that person is speaking to you, the one thing they want the most in the world at that moment is to get out what they're trying to communicate to you. And if you try to finish their sentence for them, you may feel that you're helping them or you may think I'm going to help them by finishing their sentence. But really what you're doing is you're taking away their voice. It may be the words that you're completing for them are probably their words, but you're not letting them finish. And that, that can be a very traumatic experience for someone who has fluency problems. It can take them down a downward spiral. Uh, so I ask that you let them finish. As if you feel awkward, only imagine what they're feeling because they're trying to get this out and they're struggling. And it's a struggle they've had before and it's a struggle they're going to have again. So just let them get it out. Wow. And you bring up a very good point because when i was younger i had a, a um i had a lot of anger with regards to my stutter and when i would have a block a very long block the the other person would just finish my sentence um and that would anger me yes because i felt like i know what I'm going to say, I'm just having a block. And and when you finish my s sentences for me, that, that makes me feel less than. That makes me feel like I'm broken. Mm -hmm. And that would just anger me. And that's when I would shut down completely. Yeah, exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about because I I felt that. Um, it, it's a, it's an action that you may feel is not wrong as the person finishing the sentence, uh, the receiver in the conversation. Um, but the, the person who's having the fluency issue that's speaking that uh, may be struggling at that moment, if you finish their sentence, it can really take the wind out of their sails. And like you said, make them feel less than, which is probably the polar opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. But it's, um, it's one of those situations where you feel like you're helping. But in reality, you're, you're, you're really not. Right. That's why the the whole key is education. You know, yes, it might be a good idea to ask the person who stutters, is it OK if I help you and let the and let him or her tell you yes or no? That way, you know how to appropriately respond. Now, job wise, have you ever uh, um, experienced job discrimination because of your stutter? Uh, no, I really haven't experienced any kind of job discrimination. Um, I've, I've definitely been in some really interesting situations during my employment um, at certain places because of my stutter, though, uh, which would cause for some, some interesting situations. I've always met the challenge of public speaking head on. Um, whenever you speak in front of a, you know, a room full of people, you get nervous. And that's kind of ten tends when the fluency problems begin to kind of come back. Or if I'm having to, you know, follow a certain verbiage or script, if you will, if it's the first time I see it or the first couple times I see it, it's almost like I need to figure out where to breathe so that way I don't stutter in the flow of the words. Uh, so working through that can be awkward at first. And if there's someone on the phone on the other end, as you're trying to walk through it, it's it's not... <laughs> ideal, if you will, um, especially if you're in a situation where you're trying to sell something. Um, I grew up in El Paso, Texas, and um, there's a there's a large number of call centers in El Paso, Texas, you know, because the, the labor there is, they, they, the companies can, can get away with paying people a little bit less in El Paso. Um, so there's, there's a lot of outbound sales, inbound sales, inbound customer service. There's a lot of that type of work there. And um, I worked in a couple of those different places. And speaking to someone on the other end of the phone, trying to convince them to buy something uh, while having the requirement uh, to say certain words and a certain verbiage, um, the first couple of times it was very awkward because I didn't know where to pinpoint the breathe, the, the, where to breathe. That way I wouldn't have a block. And it almost sounded like I was avoiding speaking because I was blocking. So I just have to explain and say, hey, you know what, this is the situation. So if you hear this, I'm not trying not to talk. I'm just having a problem here. I'll figure it out. I just got to figure out where to breathe. And once I get that, I'll be fine. So after after a couple of days, 
I'd be fine because it's almost like I picked up a rhythm of where to breathe within the required script if that was required of me. Um, if it was more free form, then it was okay because I could figure out where, where to breathe whenever, just like I'm having a normal conversation. But uh, if it's a situation where I have a script in front of me, it's okay. Okay, you need to read this. Okay. Um, and it's a conversation in real time, but with a script, that's where it would kind of get kind of challenging for me. But never discrimination to where they're like, okay, well, this isn't the job for you. They, they always said, okay, well, you know, give it a shot. Thankfully, I never ran into any kind of a, just any kind of discrimination. Oh, wow. Because, you know, um, when I was growing up, um, you know, all those um, want ads, they would have it in bold um, and in all caps, you know, must have excellent communication skills. And let me tell you, I would cross those out with a big red X. And when I was all done, like both pages of the want ads had mm -hmm. so many, <laughs> so X's. many red X's. And so I told myself, OK, what what can I do well? And so in in junior high, they made us take typing one and typing Two. And so that was two years of of, uh, of typing. And so, you know, my average speed was 100 words per minute with a couple of errors. And so I went into data entry because I knew that there would be zero talking and that all day long I'll just be doing data entry and da da da. And so that's how I got around that. But when the people at the front desk were going on on break and going to lunch they would uh, call out people to cover the front desk and that's when i would run to the bathroom and just hang out there for like 15 minutes or 30 minutes and so that way you know i couldn't uh, be called <laughs> upon <laughs> to handle the front desk because i tell you that phone rang constantly and and you know just hearing the first ring for me, my heart would pound so hard. My chest would actually hurt. And wow. so I thought, no, let me go run to the restroom, go hide out in a stall for 15 minutes and just have a seat. And then your legs get numb. So that's a whole other issue. But <laughs> but that's how I got around it. But, you know, thankfully... You know, now I'm, you know, I'm at the age where I just don't care anymore. You know, it's like, oh, well, I stutter. Life goes on. So now had you ever experienced social um, isolation because of your stutter? Uh, no, I, I really wouldn't say social isolation. Like I, I've never really felt like my stutter has gotten in the way of really anything. It's just been a part of me. So it's not like I've been like, well, I really want to go talk to those people. But what if I stutter? So I'm, I'm not going to do that. I've never felt a scenario that I can remember that, that I've had, that I've been in that type of a situation. Um, I, I really just kind of meet it head on and just like you just said right now, you know what, if I, I, I stutter. So if I'm meeting someone for the first time and I, I get a block and it's hard for me to get words to come out, once, once I manage to get the words out, then I tell them, I was like, sorry, you know what, that probably felt awkward, but, you know, this is what's going on. So I, I really try to be transparent, honestly. Um, I feel being transparent is really the best way to go simply because it, it gets it out there and it's not something where people are like, what's this guy's deal? You know, it's just, so it's, it's, for me, it's just always been the best way to approach something. Um, if I experienced any isolation when I was younger, it, it was really, it was more than likely not to my stutter. Um, I, I can remember days where, there were weekends where I was in middle school and I did nothing. You know, I, I was like, man, I wish I was out with friends. You know, I wish I had a group of friends that I can go be with. But I, I never felt like that was because of my stutter. Um, honestly, I just really hadn't met the people that I wanted to spend time with to say, hey, let's go hang out with them. Now, thanks be to God, that eventually happened. <laughs> and, and in high school, I was able to kind of, you know, um, formulate a circle of friends to kind of be with. And we wanted to hang out outside of school. Um, but I never really felt like my stutter uh, was any kind of a hurdle in being social, thankfully. Now, have you ever done this? Um, you are you you are having a conversation and you have a block. 
Have you ever um, tapped your leg, tapped your head, tapped your foot, um, you know, hit your arm, hit your leg to help you get the word out? Uh, Yeah. Um, Honestly, for me, a lot of that, a lot of that is um, it goes back to my breathing. Um, If if it goes beyond that, um, at times what I do like to do, even right now, um, I'm doing this subconsciously, but I'm, I'm doing it. Um, I have something in my hand that I can fidget with. Um, I have a cap of the water bottle that I'm jigging from, and I'm just kind of moving that through my fingers and I'm squeezing it and I'm just kind of, I'm just fidgeting with it. And th- that's one thing that I do know that I do do. Um, and it does help me because it, ke- it keeps my mind focused on partly what I'm saying, what I'm going to say, formulating the words in my brain before they come out of my mouth. And I'm also moving this around. So it, it's helping It's helping me think, actually, is what it's doing. So I don't know if in doing so, it's helping me with my fluency. But it, it seems to work. Uh, at times, I'll, I'll, I'll have a pen in my hand or, um, you know, just something like that in my hand that will kind of help me. See, and that is very um, interesting because, you know, Gloria... Uh, 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 um, Esteban was right with her pop <laughs> hit. The rhythm is going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> because when I talk, <laughs> I'm looking all over the place. I'm looking up. I'm looking down. I close my eyes. My hands are all over the place. I'm tapping my foot. And, and you know, I've, <laughs> I've been asked by, by certain people who have witnessed this, you know, do I need medical attention? Do they need to call 911? <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. This is just what I do to help me get the word out. Because, I mean, I have a, a lot of tips. I have a lot of techniques. Although uh-huh. I do have a lot of crutches that I use to help me in my everyday. You might hear me doing a, a British accent to help me out. That's just what I do. Be because what I have learned is, you know, life goes on. <laughs> the world isn't going to stop because I can't say my name. And so I may do it in a British accent and an Australian accent. I mean, just but that's just what I do. <laughs> Another thing I do is I I speak with my hands a lot, too. So if I'm having a conversation with someone, you know, there are times where my hands are all over the place. And um in a way, I feel like that helps me as well with my fluency, because as I'm speaking, I'm thinking of what I'm going to do with my hands. And um, I I know what you mean about looking around, looking up, looking down, closing your eyes, because that, that's something that I feel like I do as well, especially like the looking around, I'm looking around, looking down. Um, I close my eyes sometimes when I'm listening, but that's mainly for me. So that way I, I can get distracted easily. So if I'm listening to something I really want to listen to, that I just, I make sure I want to retain and comprehend. I, I do tend to close my eyes, but that's so I can zero in. And partly I feel like if I close my eyes, my hearing is going to get better and my comprehension is going to get better. But if, if I'm speaking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll hold something in my hand or I'll talk with my hands too. That, that, that seems to help me when I can speak with my hands. You know, I am, I am in the same a boat as you because I use everything to help me out. You know, whatever I have, I will, yeah, yeah. I will use it to, to the to the best of my ability. <laughs> yes. Now we all have our good speech days, and then we have our our our, our bad ones. I mean, just really bad speech days. How do you handle um, a bad speech day? I tell myself that tomorrow is another day. If I am blessed with another day on this earth, then it's another day and another opportunity to have a good day, each day or any other aspect of, of my life. How cool. Um, I really like that. Now, when you're having a good speech day, do you s- s- celebrate that? Because when when I have a good sp- speech day, I mean, you know, I'm talking on the phone. Everything is going great. I went through a drive through I got the order out. And so when I'm all done, I may go to Dairy Queen and get me a blizzard because I deserve it. Um, how do you <laughs> how do you 
celebrate a win of having a good speech day? Uh, for me, it's just kind of being present and knowing that I had one. We, we get busy with our life, right? You know, we all have, you know, some of us have kids, some of us don't, some of us are married, some of us aren't, but we all have bills. We all have responsibilities. We all have something we're doing throughout the day. We all have our priorities. And in that hustle and bustle, we can all lose track of the successes we have. So when I am having a good day, a successful day, I I try to be intentional in recognizing it. You know, and you know what? Today was a good day. Because it's it's those good days that help it help you, especially when you're having a bad day. And you're like, man, I'm just never gonna get this right. And then you remember, oh no, you know, I I have in the past, so I know I can do it. It's just a matter of, you know, resetting and going forward once again. Right. That's great that that you have a that you have a positive mindset. That is that is just awesome. Now, let me ask you a very interesting question, because I've polled a, 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 a lot of people who st stutter and the responses are just 50 50. I mean, it's mm. it's split right down the middle. So let me ask you this interesting question. So when you're alone, Jason, mm -hmm. in your home, can you speak without stuttering? Uh, yes, I can. Don't know what it is, but I really only experience a lot of my fluency issues when I'm in conversation. See, and that is extremely um, interesting because we're all different with our stutter. You know, we you know, we we all have our different journeys. And for me, when I'm alone, I still stutter when 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 I'm talking to myself, you know, I still stutter when I'm having a thought in the shower and I'm talking to myself, I still stutter. And so, you know, it's just um, interesting how we're all different. And for many people who st who stutter when when they are by themselves, they don't stutter stutter. So, you know, I find that just interesting. It really is interesting. That kind of sparks a question on, on my end. When you, when you think, so like internally, when you're thinking, do you stutter when you're thinking? Like when you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to do this tomorrow. Do, do you stutter? Well, or what I have audible, like when you speak, but well, see, that is um, interesting because how I was taught as as I'm talking to you right now, mm -hmm. I am also thinking about the conversation in my head. And so I can visually see the words coming down the pike simultaneously while speaking to you. And if there is a word that I'm not able to say as I'm still talking to you, I can see it in my head. It's coming right around the corner. I will just pick a much easier word to put in its place. And so when I am alone and just talking to myself, I still stutter. And when, you know, whenever I'm, whenever I, I tell myself of my schedule tomorrow or, you know, or whatnot, you know, mm -hmm. I still stutter. So it's just, you know, it's just interesting. Interesting. I've, I've, I've experienced that myself to where if I've, I can feel I'm going to have a problem with a certain word, I pick a easier word to say, if you will. So I, I, I know exactly what you mean when you say that, because that's an experience that I've had also to where there's, for, for some reason, certain letters are just harder than others when, when they begin with a certain letter. Um, at times I struggle with R words or names that begin with R's. I have a cousin, I have a cousin and her name is um, Rosella. And if you notice right there, I had to do an um before I said it. That's because I could begin to feel the block right before I said her name. Um, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, whenever it's our name or even sometimes our words, those uh, present a little bit more of a challenge to me. Well, let me tell you, Jason, I have a hard time with all 26 letters, the <laughs> consonants and the vowels. <laughs> you pick a letter, I have trouble with it. <laughs> That's just Pedro. That's just me. So let me ask you this. Because I have polled people who stutter, mm -hmm. and uh, this has this this has happened to them. So let me ask you if it's happened to you. Let's say you have an appointment 
a doctor's appointment and you head on over to the office and you walk in and there's an admin person at the front desk and they greet you. Good morning. Da, da, da. Um, how may I help you? What is your name? And then you have a block, not a regular block. You have a long block. And has the other person asked you, did you forget your name? <laughs> has, has that ever happened to you, Jason? Please tell me. <laughs> well, let's let's just thank the good Lord that my parents did not name me Robert or Renee or anything beginning with R. Because <laughs> if my name began with R, I'm sure I would have a block every time I have to say my name. Um, thankfully, it's, you know, and whenever you say my name, Jason, like you have to smile. It's hard to say my name without smiling, I guess, because the A.S., it makes your mouth make that that shape, if you will. Oh, and, that is uh, so cool. Yeah. So I, I just think that it, it's like my name is like sliding down a hill. It's it just slides. So it's easy to get out. And it, it for me, fluency is very visual. And that can sound weird to a lot of people. But it's almost like in, when I'm speaking, it's not like I see an audio wave. Like if you're editing audio and you see the... The, when you're speaking, you see the up and down, almost like a heart rate monitor, but it's like it's smooth or it's peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, you know, and it's, I don't know, it, that's just kind of how my mind works when I'm speaking. And my name is, it's always smooth. So I can, I can always get it out, thankfully. Wow. Well, see, you know, I have a hard time with my P's and since my name is Pedro Pena. Uh, oh, <laughs> double whammy there. <laughs> I'm telling you, when back in the day, when I would try to do my peas, they would come out like a kiss, like Pedro Pena, you gotcha. know, Pena. And the other person is like, are you kissing me? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> trying to say my name here. <laughs> Sir or ma'am. Right. I am right. not. <laughs> I am just trying to tell you my name. <laughs> and that's when, that's when I stopped and educate because my motto is if you know better you do better and so if if i have a long block and if they ask me did i forget my name i i take that opportunity and say i have a speech impediment so it takes me a little bit longer and and nine times out of ten they will apologize. I am so sorry. I had no, no idea, you know, da, da, da. but then you have that one person, you know, who just doesn't like their job. They're, right. they're angry with the world and they're looking at their watch. And so the old Pedro with the anger issues would just would have lashed out. But I know I said, no, 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 no. It's all about education. And if they're not going to hear it, then, oh, well. They have their own demons that they have to work through. But I, I still have my integrity. I still have my um, ethics and professionalism. And so I will just kill them with my kindness you and, you know, just move on with my day because life is just too short, you know, to, to, to get hung up on those, you know, little things. I agree. But yeah, I agree completely. It's amazing how that 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 statement of just telling people, you know what, I was I have a speech impediment. How far that goes? Um, if we could only get the words out, <laughs> um, you know what I mean. Like if we could, I I would not want to be in a situation to where I need to preface everything I say when I meet someone new for the first time. I have a speech impediment, but if in, if the situation calls for it, that that really goes a long way when you share that. Which, I mean, I, I think it's important. That is a very good point. And so I want to change gears a, 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 a little bit and then hit on a hot topic. Okay? Right. I mean, you know, there are a lot of hot topics for <laughs> people who stutter. But here's a hot one. It's like super hot. So how was dating with having a stutter? Because, you know, dating is hard as it is, but... My oh my! If you add on there a stutter, holy mac and cheese. Um, how did <laughs> how did you handle dating as a stutterer? Well, I 
I can say this. I, I really didn't date a lot. I never really chalked that up to my stutter or said, hey, I'm going to hide behind this. And I just never really dated a lot. Um, when I when I did date, I had been around that person enough to be comfortable with them to, one, ask them out. And for me, when I was in that kind of a situation, uh, me, just like probably 99% of the men out there, I was pretty scared of rejection. So, you know, I, I really, once I worked up the courage to, and be brave enough to ask someone out on a date, um, by that point, I had kind of shared with them already that I, that I, um, that I had a stutter, that I had this fluency problem. So it was something that was already known, but, um, I, again, you know, it's, it's, and going back to the social the social isolation question, I, I never really let it bother me. Um, just kind of met it head forward. And for me, it was more of working up the courage to express my feelings about someone to them directly than, than saying, can I get the words out? Um, that's just the way it's always been. Right. How cool. Uh, um, um, and what I tell people is that, you know, the heart wants what it wants. The heart doesn't care if you stutter. Sure, the right. heart doesn't care if you can't say your name. And um, it shouldn't really matter at all. I, I agree completely. And honestly, um, my wife, uh, God bless her, she's extremely supportive. Uh, there's a lot going on with me um, on, on the list of things associated with Jason. Stuttering is very low on the list. I have some other kind of issues with my health, and um, my wife has been supportive no matter what. She's never seen my stutter as as a hindrance or a, um, anything that's like a, a bad mark on me, if you will, or like a, no, you know what, this guy can't even talk. Um, when I met her, she was mature enough and to to really see past that and see who I am as a person, which um, I thank God she was able to do. How cool. I mean, that that is just awesome. It is so important to have people around you who support you no matter what. That is correct. So here is here's another hot topic, Jason. I mean, just w w one after another. Yes. <laughs> here comes another hot topic. So what do you think about all this new technology? You have Google Home. You have Alexa. And then you have the one that starts with an S, which I have a really hard time with. Do you think that it's helpful or or is it hurtful, like a, you know, a crutch? Well, I kind of have my own thoughts on, on those <laughs> on those kind of devices um, as it is. You know, we already everyone, for the most part, has a smartphone in their pocket or in their hand. So that device is already everywhere. Uh, but if it's a Siri, if it's a, a, a Alexa or a Google Home, I can see some type of benefit for that. You know, in certain scenarios, especially if you have someone that's disabled and they're able to have their home where, where it's just a matter of speaking and saying, hey, Google, turn on the bathroom light or unlock the front door or even like the, this is ring technology, right, where there's a ring doorbell where you can look at your phone and you can talk to whoever is at, at the door. Through, your, through the app on your phone and you can see who it is. Um, certain situations, that, that can be good. But um, I, I tend to have more of a suspicious mind with those type of devices than anything. So I've, I've kind of chosen not to kind of have, have any of that in my home. E even if it can bring me some kind of convenience, I'm, I'm not ready for it to be a part of my home yet. <laughs> see, and I'm in the same boat. Um, my um, SUV is um, voice activated everything. And so, I mean, I tried, I mean, believe you me, I spent hours in my SUV sweating, just trying to do the voice activation, uh -huh. everything. And so I said, you know what? Maybe it's not for me. And that's okay. I will just manually push the button and it'll start. <laughs> that's Very just true. me. That. Yeah, it is. It's it, I don't know. It's I, I think there. I, in my mind, there's like there's like a um a boiler room type of office in Russia somewhere, 
where everyone's just mining all of our data through all these devices. But that's just my mind. I'm very much into conspiracy theories and that type of world. So that's oh, kind of where my mind goes. So let me deviate just a little bit. Um, I was having l- lunch with with a buddy, and so my phone was on top of the table, and we were talking about tents. You know, um, buying a ten by ten tent and putting it, you know, in in the b- b- backyard for like you know b- b- barbecues and whatnot. Sure. And not two hours later, on my feed, on my on my Instagram feed, on my Facebook feed, there were ads for tents. And I thought, holy mac and cheese, they are listening. <laughs> right. It was it was nothing you Googled. You typed in no, your phone. No. You were just talking. We were about just it. Yes. I mean, that was just spooky because for the next couple of days. All of the ads were, you know, tense. And I thought, oh, okay. So what I'll do from here on out is just leave it in my bag on the floor. <laughs> there you go. Or what you could do is say, um, you know, I wish I knew tomorrow's lottery numbers. Just over and over again. <laughs> oh, my phone. gosh. That would be mo' better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's go back. All right. So speech-wise, what is a challenge that you had to overcome and how did you do it um a challenge that i had to overcome i I, i'm going to go back to uh being in the workplace setting and you know some of the jobs that i had growing up were were again in in the cost and environment and you know if if you're hired to to be on the phone for eight hours and say this over and over again whether it was trying to sell something or trying to conduct a survey or try to provide customer service even. Um, they, the quality assurance team wants you to hit certain marks by saying certain things in a certain way. And if you didn't do it, no matter the end result of the phone call, your score was good or bad. And that had a lot to do with you know, merit increases and even the length of your employment. So for someone like me, where I had to figure out where to breathe so that way I could effectively communicate to someone what I'm trying to uh, tell them, that that was a challenge that I had a lot of. And uh, it it got to the point where I was like, okay, I just need to, I need to understand where, where I can breathe. So that way I can say this and it sound natural. And it sound like I'm not breathing naturally. Uh, For some people, they could pick it up and do it and not bat an eye. But for me, I really had to work at it to the point to where um, I'd go home and I would still practice. So that way the next day, I, it was better. And I wasn't in that awkward situation of struggling with someone else on the phone and someone else with the company hearing me struggle. So that's um, those, that was the challenge that I really had. Oh, wow. Now, briefly, I went over your um, introduction Um covering this topic, but I want to ask you outright, what has stuttering taught you? Stuttering has really taught me two main things, and it's it's taught me a lot in life. Uh, It's taught me to be determined, and it's it's taught me to be patient, especially with myself. Um, Having these fluency issues, um, having patience with myself, uh, has kind of come through in a lot of other ways, and it's kind of interesting because um, it's interesting the way life works. Um, I haven't talked about it a lot yet um, on here with you, Pedro, and you may not even know this, but um, I, I'm I'm in need of a kidney transplant. Um, I go through peritoneal dialysis every night. So what that means is every night I plug into a, a machine, and it it is it essentially acts as my kidneys, and it's it's a lot of steps. It's a lot of steps from A to Z to me to where I can lie down and go to sleep. And in a way, I feel like stuttering has prepared me for this stage of my life because I need to be very determined and I need to have a lot of patience with myself with this. And it's there's certain steps I need to follow in a certain order for me to accomplish what I need to do for that treatment to begin and for it to finish. And... It's interesting because it's I was it, weird because I was thinking about this and it's like man like I don't 
I don't experience a lot of frustration with this uh, be because I'm just so accustomed to being patient with myself. And n now that this is a scenario that I'm in, having patience with myself just feels natural. So it's a, it's, it's a pretty interesting situation to be in and to experience this and even to realize that, wow, this, this is um, stuttering has played a hand in preparing me for this age of my life. Wow. That is just incredible. That's incredible. Stuttering has taught me the big E, empathy. Mm -hmm. Because now I can put myself in other people's shoes. And, you know, I've felt their pain. I've felt their their nervousness, their anxiety. I mean, you know, um, I can feel everything th th that they are feeling and that has helped me tremendously later in life with everything and so many people call their st stuttering a curse but you know for me in which i can only s speak for myself my st stutter has been a blessing yeah, man, because i can agree with that too yes sir because it it has taught me things that I could never learn from a book. And also throughout my life, it has taught me um, courage. It has taught me resiliency because, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been knocked down and knocked down and knocked down, but I get right back up. Yep. I mean, you know, I don't let anything hold me down anymore because life is precious and so i will live every single day to the fullest couldn't have said it better myself now what advice would you give to another person who stutters to another person who stutters i would say don't let stuttering hold you back stuttering is just one aspect of who you are it's not who you are it's not something that you want to hide behind or use as an excuse to get out of anything. Use it as a way to learn on how to overcome. Use it as a way to learn on how to be resilient. So that way, when the time comes for you to be that way, it's just like any other day for you. How cool. That's powerful. So, okay, let's say you had an opportunity to be on the world's stage and tell the world about stuttering. W what would you tell the world about st st stuttering? Uh, I would tell the world just because you stutter, it doesn't mean that you're not intelligent. It doesn't mean that you're not, it doesn't mean that you're not confident. It does not mean that you're not sure of what you're saying. Um, if you do stutter, the person who is stuttering know that they would like for nothing more at that moment than to get out what they're saying. Just like, I, just like the advice I gave to parents and teachers. If you feel awkward, only imagine how the person stuttering feels. Give them the patience and extend that to them so that way they can get out what they're saying. Oh, wow. I'm, um, I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Whew. Well, well, Jason, I would like to thank you for spending time with me and sh sharing your story because I believe there's healing in sh sharing. I think you are awesome. I think you are courageous. I think you are an inspiration. And so I know, I know that this will not be our last conversation because I have many more topics to go over w w with you. But um, I would like to tell you that I have a huge audience and they are awesome. Let's say they want to re reach out to you and get into contact with you. How would they do that? Well, um, first, thanks so much for ex extending the invitation and uh, allowing me to kind of share my study in life with you uh, and your audience as well. Um, I, I, I'd love to you know, talk to you again as well. Um, I'm definitely up for that anytime. Uh, you would like to, um, I'm, you're, you're always going to get a yes from me. Let's put it that way. Um, so if any, anyone listening would like to get hold of me directly, 
um, a lot of my contact actually is going to be through my social media and through email. Um, I, I have a podcast as well. Um, that's actually how Pedro and I met, right? <laughs> uh, we met yes, at it is. a we met at a, a podcasting yes at Texas yeah. PodCon. It was a podcasting conference here in San Antonio. I'm very thankful that that Pedro made the drive down from from, from where he lives down to San Antonio, and um, we were able to meet and uh, kind of kind of talk and kind of share a little bit. But uh, my my podcast is called the John Three Thirty Podcast. It's it, it it's a faith based podcast. It focuses on Catholic faith life. Um, so I, I speak to everyday people and I ask them how they keep their fire burning for our Catholic faith. So if, if it's if you're if, if you're Catholic or if you're maybe wondering what you know how how people stay close to their faith overall, if you're a Christian brother and sister, you know um, I invite you to you know listen to my podcast as well if you like to. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, anywhere you can find podcasts. If you want to get a hold of me. Uh, you can do so at john330podcast at gmail.com, uh, or you can follow me on social media. Uh, uh, once again, just look up john330podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, earlier, I mentioned my, my kidney situation. Um, if you're kind of curious to follow my journey uh, in regards to pursuing a kidney transplant, if you have kidney issues, I'm always up to talking to people about that as well. If you know someone and you kind of want to know how to how you can help them or what you can do to be there for that person. By all means, you can always reach out to me too about that. If you search uh, Jason's Kidney Journey on Facebook and on Instagram, you'll find me there as well. You can send me a message. Um, I'm pretty pretty active on social media and I'm pretty active on responding back as soon as I see the message also. So I'd be happy to hear from anyone. Wow, that is awesome. And so um, I will have the links in the show notes and so that way they can just click on the link to find you and so would like to say thank you once again to a fellow podcaster of the john 330 podcast check it out check it out and so i would um would like to wish you a great evening and we will talk again thank you sir thank you if you like this podcast, head on over to Apple iTunes. Subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you for listening, and we will talk again.